Hey, everybody. Hello, Alex. Welcome back to No Man's Land, folks. There we go. Now we should be able to see it on the screen. Uh, Mr. Electric, thanks for the follow and welcome. Uh, so this is the special Martin Luther King Day edition of the stream. <laughs> Since I got the day off. Uh, sorry for the delay. I meant to start a little bit earlier. Um, but there was something I was supposed to help my wife with this morning that I forgot about. So uh, that's never a good thing. Hey, Connect. Hello, hello. All right. Let's get ready to... Let's get ready to harvest some barley. This is going to be our chicken feed for the year. And I'm going to do this with the GPS turned on, I think. Oh, you know what? Um, whoops. I had... Uh, I had changed the units to... Uh, to... American units for another map, um, <clears throat> but I, uh, I'm not used to working with them anymore, so I'm going to keep things metric here in the game, because when I see the width and it tells me 53 feet, it's like I'm kind of lost. 14 meters I can get. Alright, so we want to go due north. Um, changing the heading always seems to reset the width, so there we go, and then adjust the track, get that over towards the edge of the field, and I think we're good. Let's turn it on, make sure we have straw swath turned off, because I want that chopped straw fertilize the field for the next crop. Oh, okay. Use acres, but everything else is in metric. Yeah. Yeah, I think out of all those units, hectares is probably the one that <laughs> people have the least experience with. I don't even know what the conversion is between acres and hectares. The others I can kind of mentally picture it in my head if I think hard enough. Alright, so we'll deviate with, from the path here just to get around these rocks. Yeah, hey Stillwater. Yep, streaming on a Monday. Today's a, today's a paid holiday for me, so... I thought I'd take a couple hours to do some more No Man's Land. So I'm having a lot of fun on this map. In fact, so much so that it's been kind of hard for me to resist uh, playing on it offline. So um, last night I've been. Last night I was checking out some other maps, um, and I found one, oh crud, what's it called now? There we go. <laughs> now I'm drawing a blank. Hang on a second. <laughs> I don't remember the name of the, of the map I was checking out yesterday. Oh, Deer Creek. Deer Creek is the map I was looking at yesterday. Um, that supposedly takes place in Ohio in the U.S. Um, which, if any of you are not from the U.S., it's uh, one of the Midwestern states just south of Michigan where I used to live. It's relatively flat, uh, lots of big fields, you know, corn and soybean kind of thing. And the map is set up the same way. Um, if you start a new farmer mode, 
the map that you start with is something like 200 acres, um, 180 acres, something like that. Um, I'm not sure, uh, Mr. Electric. I don't know how many, I don't know how long I'm going to go on this map. Um, but as of now, we have a goal to, to make cakes. Um, so I would say that for now, my intention would be to make enough episodes that we can, that we can produce cakes. Uh, I don't know how long that'll take. But so far, we're, we're just getting started making flour, so. Oh, holy cow. <laughs> yeah, that's a lot of snow. Uh, there we go. I want to shut this off so that I can go get my green cart. I think we'll use the Fent for that. Yep, snow days are great, even when you're an adult, huh? I remember when I was a kid, we would get so excited when... when it would snow. Um, and that was pre-internet day, so we would have to, like, turn on the TV and the radio and wait for them to announce the school closures school closures, excuse me, so we could find out if we had to go to school or not. Of course, living in Michigan, um, they don't, they don't often do snow days just because there's a little bit of snowfall. Otherwise, you'd miss half the year. All right, let's get this pipe out. And now that I live in El Paso, whenever we get snow here, the, the whole city shuts down, even if it's just like a quarter of an inch, because nobody knows how to deal with it. Okay. So... This first 14,000 liters will feed, <laughs> will feed our chickens for about three months. So a few more loads like that and we'll be all set for the year. And if we have any left over, we'll take it down to the grain mill. All right, turn on the cruise control. And so, um, like, uh, like I was showing you guys before, um, we've got barley here. That's for chicken feed. We've got soybeans planted on these three fields. Um, that's just for selling. Although we could, uh, maybe we could put down an oil mill and turn that into soybean. I think you can make soybean oil, right? Um, and then down here we're growing oats, which is going to go to the green mill for making bread and uh, eventually that'll be used for making cakes once we, but first we need the other ingredients for the cake, um, which we can't make yet. We're gonna need cows uh, for milk and butter. We're gonna need sugar beets for sugar. Um, so we're already doing the grain uh, for the flour. Uh, we're already making strawberries in the greenhouse. So we just need the sugar and the dairy products, and we'll be able to make highly profitable confections. Oh, really? Oh, okay. Yeah, this is... Um, I mean, besides Factorio, this is one of my other favorite games, I would say. I don't like it... Well... Yeah, I guess I could say I don't like it as much as Factorio. Not to say that I dislike it in any way, but... 
Factorio is probably my all-time favorite. I'm going to remove this tree. But I do have a lot of hours on farm sim. And there's a little bit of crossover. I think there's a lot of Factorio fans that like... Well, I think Factorio fans in general like simulation type of games. So this one is a common denominator for a lot of us. Um, but we're playing Farming Simulator 22, which is the latest version. Which uh, just came out a month or two ago. Uh, which is why I've been focusing on this lately. Because I haven't played in quite a while and uh, whenever a new version comes out I tend to get immersed in it for a bit right so I think I think the only thing potentially standing in the way of meeting our plans on this map is a better map coming along <laughs> uh, which you know could be could be Calmsden farm And I think when, and maybe we can do both. We could perhaps do continue this map and do that one. But I'm thinking with Calmston Farms, I'll probably do like a survival style playthrough. Yeah, ho hopefully not that long. I know that I know that Calmston was already submitted to Giants for evaluation and testing. So I'm. I'm hoping that that'll show up on Mod Hub pretty soon. Um, I'm fairly certain that that'll be a high priority for the testers at Giants too, because um, Oxygen David's maps are always a really big hit, and I know it'll. I know that there there are a lot of players um, who are still playing FS19 just because they're waiting for a map like that to come out for FS-22, so. Okay, I'm going to hire a worker to keep that rolling, and let's see if we can empty it. 77 hours? Was that your... Was that your first rocket, Mr. Electric? Because if so, that's not too bad. Yeah, I think it was probably something similar for me, too, to get my first rocket launched. It was probably somewhere around 60, 70 hours. And restarting about 100 times. Yeah, you could be right, Alex. It might... I guess it might still be a while. All right, come on. There we go. I try to start off slowly when I stop on the field like that because we do miss a little spot with the chopped straw once we restart. All right, but in any case, um, this field won't take too long. We got a nice big harvester. The soybeans are looking great. I love seeing those dark green fields. 1,262 mods, are you kidding? Holy crud, that's gonna take a while. <laughs> hey, ghost child, I'm doing fine, how are you? Having a good day so far. Anytime I can relax and play on no man's land, it's things are going pretty well. Won't be a really long stream today because I got, I still have other errands to do with with my wife today, but I'll be able to go for a couple hours.
looks like we're harvesting coffee. Yeah, there are some new mods today. I was checking before I started the stream. Uh, Mr. Electric, where I live, it is uh, 11, 10 a.m. Or 11, 08 a.m., something like that. Still morning. Oh, so I, I know some of you guys have seen my screen flash every once in a while. Um, and this has been a problem that I haven't been able to solve yet. Um, initially, initially, I thought that it was related to farm sim to FS22 because I never had that problem. Or at least I haven't had it recently until I started playing this game. And it only happens, or let's say it only happened while playing this game. So naturally I assumed that there was something going on with the game that was causing things to mess up. Um, but since, why, why is the hired worker not working? Is it because I have course play? Or maybe it's because I have the GPS on. That could be it. Let's try turning off GPS. Oh, okay. Yeah, it's because GPS was turned on. Or because it was active. Anyway, as I was saying, um, I thought it was related to farm sim, um, but I've also been playing some truck simulator, and I have been having the same problem, not as often, but I have noticed the problem with truck simulator too. And the common denominator between those two games is this. Why aren't you unloading? Hmm. Yeah, I think course play might be messing something up here, guys. Oh, yeah, because I'm full, right. Okay. Alright, you stop. Thank you. Let's go empty this out. Yep, I'm, I hit my weight limit. It doesn't look full, but it it's heavy. Yeah, so I think it might have something to do with the controller. So I'm going to have to do some further research. Check the event viewer for see if there's anything related to the controller that's screwing up. I don't know. Alright, and we can throw this into our new silo. How exciting. In you go. And actually, I think with the next load, I'll just take it directly to the chicken pens. Top those off first, and that'll save me from having to do that again later. Hey, Jay, how are you? And Bloodline, hello? Hello? 
Right, so we'll do the barley uh, this month, and then I believe the soybeans will be ready in July, and maybe the oats as well. We'll check the calendar here in a minute. <laughs> All right. You're here to not help me as usual. Thanks. <laughs> yeah, Bloodline, I haven't I haven't researched Covarex enrichment yet on Farm Sim. Need more science packs. Hey K Mac, how are you? <laughs> right, so I mentioned that map I tried. Um, what was it called again? Deer Creek. It's got... Yeah, it has huge fields. Like... How can I say it? Um, I was using... I was using the hardy, this big uh, sprayer to fertilize the field that you start the game with, 9,000 liters, and I had to refill it before, before I was even halfway finished. It was maybe only a third of the way done with the field and had to be refilled. That's how big the fields are. And that wasn't even the biggest field. It was one of the smaller ones. So, and that's, and that's something that, um, something that you don't really see in the Giants maps. And even, I would say, the majority of the mod maps is you don't, you don't really see a lot of that really large scale farming that is pretty common in the U.S. Um, but... I think part of that may be for playability, because I, I did play on it for a while, and it's... I don't know. I mean, when you're working on the same field for three hours, it gets a little tedious, you know? So I, I think that's probably part of the reason that, you know, that true-to-scale maps like that are not more popular. You know, where you have fields that are several hundred acres. And, uh, yeah, you know, at harvest time, you have like three or four harvesters all running in a team and everything. I mean, that stuff is pretty cool, but it, it probably is not that great for playability. A casual player is not going to want to have to do an operation that large, so... So I think that's why even on the American maps that Giants make, the uh, the fields are, you know, the fields are workable with a single machine in a reasonable amount of time. All right, we well, may as well unload again since it's here. Yeah, I think we could make we could make some fields that big on this map. Um. Yeah, Jay, the the machine is chopping up the straw. Right. Obviously only only the barley grain is going into the tank here. And so the stems and everything, uh the straw is being chopped up and then sprayed on the ground. Um which helps to enrich the soil. Right, so later on that'll get cultivated in or, or worked in with the cedar and returns, you know, some of the nitrogen and stuff to the soil, the organic matter. So in terms of the game mechanics, it counts as a it counts as fertilization. 
So um, normally you have to apply you have to apply fertilizer twice to the field before it is fully fertilized for your next crop. So by doing this, um, this takes care of that first stage of fertilization for us. Now in the game, your other option is instead of chopping it and spraying it everywhere, you can gather it in a in a line behind you, uh, what they call a swath. Uh, and if you do that, then you can pick it up with a baler and make straw bales that you can use with your animals or to sell. Um, but on this particular map, the straw is not worth very much. So I don't feel like it's worth the time to gather up. But once we start doing cows, um, we'll want to we'll wanna have a lot of straw on hand. So at that point, we'll... We'll either start picking it up with a wagon or or turning it into bales. I'm thinking we'll probably use a wagon just because it's easier to handle the straw in bulk. Rather than moving bales around, bales are kind of like pallets in that regard. Let's check our stats here. So we can get it, if we look at our stats, we can get an idea of how big this field is. So it says we've it says we've harvested uh, 2.92 hectares so far this session. So this field is I don't know probably about three and a quarter hectares by the time we finish it, something like that. Does anybody know the Does anyone know the conversion between hectares to acres? Cuz I know in my mind what an acre looks like, but I have a hard time imagining what a hectare looks like. I'm going to cut a row across here. Give myself some room. Two and a half. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Yeah, so three... Three or three and a half hectares then would be uh, like eight to ten acres. Yeah, not that big. Hey, Pedmeister, how are you? Yeah, you could buy bales too, actually. You know, it's more expensive than gathering your own. But, but it's less work. <laughs> I'm doing fine. And I would say that there's... There aren't really any major glitches in the game. You know, there's a few things here and there. Um, but it's still... It's still definitely playable. I know some of the... There's still some problems with pallet physics. Um, you know, I see in other people's YouTube videos where they're picking up pallets and... <laughs> and all of a sudden their tractor goes flying out into space and the pallets end up on the roof of the greenhouse and stuff. But... <laughs> <laughs> Is there a nautical acre? I don't think so. <laughs> you think I should get the big cow barn now before I use too much of my loan? <laughs> well, I would have to spend like another nine, seven million dollars or eight million dollars before I ran out of money to also get a cow barn. <clears throat> 
Um, whoops. Oh, okay. We're full again. And I don't want to start... I don't want to start paying interest and uh, property maintenance on the cow barn before I can actually put some cows in it. We'll see what we can do, though. We'll try to do something soon. There's an awful lot of field-worthy land in front of us here. This might be a good place to put a big grass field for cows. And sheep. We were talking about getting some sheep, too. In fact, maybe we'll do that after our harvest is done. Maybe we'll start getting into some grass. Oh, and we're full again. Man. I need a tractor that's... Or I need a trailer that is not such a sissy. <laughs> 23,000 liters of barley and it's tapping out. And I think this is actually well at least as far as this type of trailer goes I think this was had the highest weight capacity. <coughs> Um, no, I don't have a silage pit yet, so we'll need one of those, although I might do, yeah, we could buy TMR. Actually, that might not be a bad idea, because if we, um, if we did a, if we bought TMR, since we're on easy economy, we would probably still be easily profitable with the cows. Even if we bought the TMR. And then we can just get to the point that we can make it over time. Actually, like I like that idea. I think if we were playing on hard economy, we, it might it might make a difference between profitability and loss. But I think for us, it will make money even if we do it the expensive way. Um, but in terms of silage, I think what I was starting to say is that there are there are some mods that. Um, that have silos that you can load with grass or chaff and it'll turn to silage in the silo um, and it'll store it there so you don't that way you don't need like a front loader and stuff I might do that although I don't know I don't know if that's realistic or not I don't know if that if such things actually exist in the real world Crazy diamond, you cheater. Okay. <clears throat> so this field is done. Uh, let's check our stats again here. 3.48 hectares. All right. So that's how big this field is, in case anyone was wondering. And this is one of our smaller ones, I guess. Yeah, when I was talking about sheep before, the idea would be to do sheep and then also buy the tailor shop. Um, and then I, th I think you also need the, f 
the wool mill, right? So you turn the wool into cloth and then turn the cloth into clothing and sell the clothing. And I think that's where you make the big bucks. So what do you guys think? Do you think we should go with sheep or do you want to just go directly to cows? I'm not... I'm not saying it's... Um, I'm not saying we won't do sheep if we do cows first, but cows would get us is a direct step towards our end game goal, whereas sheep is not, so. <laughs> okay, no los dos. Oh, that was it. Okay, we're empty. Good. Um Mr. Electric, this this game is a sandbox, a lot like Factorio is. So um, you essentially make your own goals. Um, but I mean, the the basic goal is to make money with whatever you're doing, and there are lots of different ways you can do that. You make money so you can buy bigger and better equipment and expand and... Um, for many people, that is the expansion and the progression is the fun part. It is for me. Um, and some people just like driving tractors around. Oh, okay. So, yeah, look, we've got... Like I said, we needed 43,000 barley <coughs> uh, to feed the chickens. And we have 77,000. So, that means we can use, what, 34,000 or so? for other purposes. So I'm going to go ahead and feed the chickens and then I think we'll take we'll take 30,000 liters and take it to the grain mill. So we can make more bread. Yeah. Yeah, and and none of the and none of the farm animals will attack your base. So that's kind of nice. <laughs> there we go. So we got those chickens fed. There goes my screen again. Yeah, that's my favorite part that all the all the animals are on passive mode. <laughs> Santaro, that's funny. Okay. Alright, barley is done. I'm going to leave this this uh, trailer attached because we're going to need it for our subsequent harvest. Let's look at our calendar here. Okay, so yeah, barley in June and then in July we'll be able to harvest our oats. Uh, oh, okay, it looks like soybeans won't be ready until October, so... All right, now let's get out the big boy to take it to the grain mill. I need to attach hoses. Oh, yeah, I do. Okay. Good thing I checked. Okay. 
Okay, 30,000 liters. So we got 20 in the front. And we'll do another 10 in the back. If I can. Okay. This truck is a little bit different than the trailer, so it doesn't turn quite as quickly. There we go, 30,000. And now I'm stuck. Shop turbo. All right, there's the green mill up over yonder. empty. Let's see. Tip side back. There we go. And we'll unload that part. Alright, now let's tell them to start making barley flour. So now we're making strawberries in the greenhouse, uh, we're getting eggs from the chickens, and we're making barley flour. Uh, the barley flour will be turned into bread, so we'll turn on the bread. And uh, as you can see, we're starting to collect some strawberries from the greenhouse there. We'll let that fill up. Yep, uh, we'll just have to wait for the uh, for the flour to get distributed. I think it, I think it dis distributes like once an hour or something like that. Yeah, Mr. Electric in, I mean, like Factorio, um, Farm Sim 22 has, in addition to the farming, you've also got some production. So we brought our grain here to the grain mill. That's going to turn it into flour. And then if you see that building off in the distance there, that's a bakery. So it'll distribute flour to the bakery. We'll turn the bakery into bread, and then we can sell the bread. And that gives us, I mean, these are like productivity modules, right? It'll, it'll give us, um, it'll give us more money for the same amount of input if we do the production. Um, in fact, I did the math the other day. Uh, I think, I think it came out to around versus just selling the grain. Uh, if you turn it into flour and then bread, you get, you get 70% more money. You just have to wait for it, you know. And that's if you sell the bread at the 
you know, the prices change throughout the year, so you have to sell the bread at the peak, the peak time of year to get the 70%. But that's how the math worked out for me. All right, so let's go park this again. Um, because we won't need this again until the soybeans are ready. Um, for the oats, I'll just use the green cart to, uh, since the field is right there, I'll just empty the green cart directly into the green mill instead of taking them back here to the silo. Um, when I, when I built the green mill, I was wondering if I might need a silo next to it to hold all the grain. Um, but I checked the, I checked the XML files and the, um, the flour mill or the grain mill will hold 1.3 million liters of grain as inputs. So, uh, we won't need any additional storage. I think we're only going to get... 300 and something thousand liters off of that field, so even as big as it is. Okay. Let's close the doors there. Alright, and we're done with that for a while. Uh, let's see. Did we check what's on sale? Yeah, we did. Nothing there that we really need. Uh, let's go take a look at the eggs and make sure that we don't block the output on the eggs, although I, th I think we only have a couple pallets there right now. Yeah, I think we'll be good to wait until tomorrow before we sell more eggs. Uh, we do have that lettuce that we can sell. Um, I'll just wait until we sell the eggs and we'll take the lettuce with us at the same time. And then um, the strawberries are not going to collect here anymore. Um, because we're having these distributed directly to the bakery. So while we wait for the bakery, you know, while we wait for it to unline, we'll just, um, with the other ingredients, we'll just start filling it up with strawberries. And then once it's full, then we'll start to sell. Um, I haven't decided, uh, I was looking for comments here. Let's do a, let's do a poll, shall we? Okay, so we'll start a poll, and you guys, you guys tell me if you want cows or sheep. So actually, while you're doing that, I'll just I'll go ahead and get the eggs and the lettuce to the market. Now, do keep in mind that for cows, and I'm and I'm okay with whatever you guys decide. Okay, I'm not trying to sway you. Um, but for cows, we're going to need to invest probably close to a million dollars up front. Um, whereas with the sheep, it would be probably more like a couple hundred thousand, right? So cows are a lot more expensive, but I would also expect um, proportional profitability. And these are not loading. Let me, um, let's unload everything and try to load again. There we go. That helps. Hey, C Black. How's it going, my friend? There we go. Laser testing. That sounds interesting. Oh, that's good. Glad you could stop by and see me. Haven't chatted with you in a while.
Right. So if we start with cows, then um, to begin with, we'll just buy the food from the shop. We'll buy the TMR. Um, we'll pay a bit of a premium for that. Well, no, actually, we can we can buy it from a silo on the farm. Um, so it'll cost us a little more to keep them fed, but we should still be able to make money on it. Uh, with the sheep, we would uh, have their wool turned into cloth and make clothing with the cloth at a tailor shop. So that would be the production chain there. Um, whereas with the cows, the milk will be used to make butter and, um, well, and milk for the bakery. And then if we have any excess milk after that, we'll sell it. Okay, got 28000 from that. That's not too bad. Um, I think there is an FPS counter, but I don't know what it is. And there's no and there's no UPS in the game. It doesn't update dynamically. It's more like like once every in-game hour it updates some things. So it's not like Factorio where it has to update a million things every second. Or sixty times a second, <laughs> as is the case in Factorio. So this game is a lot easier on the CPU, but it's a lot more graphically intensive. As you can see, there's a lot of detail in the scenes. So, so this game does well with a good graphics card and a, and a normal processor, whereas I think Factorio does better with a normal graphics card and a really nice processor. We'll park the trailer here in between the coops. And then we'll go park the T6. And the poll is almost concluded. If you haven't voted yet, get your vote in. Watch out, Turbo. Don't want to run you over, buddy. Cheap. You're kidding. <laughs> okay. Well, that's fine. I was expecting it to be cows. <laughs> I'm actually kind of surprised. <laughs> oh, man. Why do I have two bays open? Oh, one is for the harvester. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we could always buy the grass too. All right, so let me, I'm gonna get the harvester uh, relocated over to the other field so that we're ready for the oats and then we'll, we'll look at setting up our sheep. Whoops. I always have a hard time disconnecting this. There we go. I'm going to unfold it. Nope. No. Stop it. God damn it. There we go. <laughs> Excuse my foul language. I don't often curse. <laughs> I don't know if that's considered swearing, what I just said. I don't think so, but anyway. I got a little frustrated. Uh, Josh11, by the way, thanks for following. And welcome to the stream. It has been good so far. I hope yours is too. Just hanging out here with my buddies, playing video games. It's always a good time. 
Um, yeah, Mr. Electric, if uh, if you've just finished your first normal playthrough of Factorio, um, watch out, Turbo. You might find SpaceX to be a big jump up in difficulty. If you're well, if you're talking about space exploration, I don't know if I'm assuming you're talking about space exploration and not and not the other SpaceX, which is what's the other one? Space expansion or something? I don't know. Well, there's one called SpaceX, and then there's one called, that people call SpaceX EX, which is short for space exploration. So, but you said SpaceX specifically, so maybe. I'm thinking of the wrong mod. Anyway, if you want to try something more complicated, um, more complex, I think Crastorio 2 is a great mod. Because it's it adds more complexity in a really interesting way and it's but it's not like overwhelmingly complex in my opinion um i i quit playing space exploration because it was it got to be too complex for me and too uh, too grindy i guess <clears throat> i kind of stopped having fun with it um whereas crastorio i kind of i stayed enthused and engaged the whole time it was just it was for me it was a better gaming experience it wasn't quite as over the top and then there's mods like pyanodons and stuff which are just kind of ridiculously complex like if they were having a contest to see who could make the most complex mod he would have won and there was a guy um there's a guy that used to stop by my stream from time to time. Um, he was also a streamer. And he was doing a series where he had like, he had like everything. He had angels, bobs, space exploration, pyanodons. I mean, it was just, it was crazy. And he finished it. it took him hundreds of hours, but why can't, can't seem to ever get this to connect. Okay, there it goes. Let's see, is it hooked up? Let's fold that. Unfold the harvester. <laughs> okay. Alright, we're ready to go. So, we are ready to go, but the crops aren't. But they will be soon. Almost done growing. Okay, um, I'm going to warp back to the farm, if you guys don't mind. There we go. Okay, let's see if we can figure out a good place to put a sheep pen. So, I'm going to get into flight mode so we can get an aerial view here. Um, actually, maybe maybe down here across from the chickens would be a good spot for it. I'm thinking if we do cows, maybe we'll do it like over here where we've got more space, you know, off of this quote unquote road. Um, and maybe we can do sheep over here. I didn't get, no, I didn't get player speed yet. Sorry. All right, so let's see let's see how big the sheep pen actually is. Well, first of all, let's get the money so that we can buy it. Um, okay, I don't need to borrow too much. I think we need. Well, we're gonna need money for the production buildings too. So let's just get let's get three hundred grand in the bank, and then we'll see what we can do with it, and then the rest we'll put back. Okay. So we'll go to construction, production, no, animals. 
sheep. And we'll go with the big one. That holds 65 sheep. Okay. So we could do it kind of um, in the same way that we have the chickens. I put it off to the side. Uh, it looks like the tipping point for the grass is there in the front. And it looks like the pallets of wool collect there on the side. Although I think in this case, maybe, maybe instead I'll set it back here so that it's not, so that we don't have to go onto the main drive. And this way we have room to expand over that way. Alright, and we'll set it back just a bit. I think that looks like a good spot. Do I own this land? I don't remember. I guess I do. Alright, cool, man. Alright, now let's go to decoration. Because I want to remove the grass off of this path that you can kind of see. Oh, I'm sorry, I want landscaping. And we go to plants, which is kind of counterintuitive. We select something other than the grass. And nothing happens. Okay. Alright, let's turn off flight mode. Why didn't anything happen? Okay. Yeah, I do own that land. Let's try it again. select it first. Oh, it's because I need to use the stupid mouse. Sorry, guys. Not the stupid mouse. The mouse. Let's not blame the mouse. Yeah, it's because you can't right-click on a controller, can you? Right, so you can, like I was saying before, you can kind of see that there's a dirt, or at least a darker color ground here, and I think it's actually uh, forest dirt, is what it's called. So I'm just trying to uncover it. Okay, and then we'll go to painting. And we'll just do regular dirt. And I'll leave behind some of the forest dirt to kind of simulate, you know, where the tires don't, don't hit the ground that often, right? That sort of thing. dirt all around the sheep pen. Yeah. Alright, I'm going to have to buy the land next to us. Let's clear some of that out. Hey, Silas. No, we didn't do we didn't do the new field yet. All right, 
Phoenix is farmland, so we need to buy that. So that we can finish our landscaping job here. Okay. And how do I rotate my camera? You can do it with the controller, but not with the mouse. All right, painting dirt. There we go. Okay, I think that looks fine. And then I think we should have, I think we should have tall grass. Well, maybe we shouldn't have tall grass where the sheep are going to be, but at least should it should look more organic, right? So maybe, you know, a little tall grass around the edges or whatever. A few patches here and there. There, I think that looks better. Because the sheep are ostensibly going to be eating that grass. Okay, and um, let's put some let's put some more decoration around it here. A few bushes. A few bushes. Okay, maybe not. And maybe a tree or two. Um, I've been liking these birch trees. So let's put like a, a medium birch tree there. Maybe one over there, and then we'll do, I like these poplars. There, poplar tree. Okay, and a little more painting. Where's, oh, dry grass, that's what this texture is. Okay, how's it look, guys? I like it. I think it's a nice looking sheep pen. The landscaping's not bad. Looks kind of natural. Okay, now we gotta buy some sheep. Uh, if you hold the left bumper and left menu button. Oh, you know what? I think I may have. I think I may have disabled that shortcut. Uh, I do remember that. I can't remember why, but I I unbound it. Yeah. I don't remember why I did it. Okay. Let's buy some critters. So this holds how many? 65, right? Okay. And I think we need at least one black sheep, right? So let's buy one black sheep, a mature one. And then the rest will do the white sheep. Um, 
Now these choices are purely cosmetic. They, they all produce the same. Okay, so if they're older than eight months, they can reproduce. So let's get, um, now I'm not sure if the wool production changes as they get older. It might. I know with chickens, it doesn't matter. You can buy the young chickens and they make just as many eggs as the old chickens. Um, so let's buy, I, I like these, uh, I like the white ones with the, uh, the white wool with the dark face. Well, we'll get a few of each. So we'll buy, let's say five of those. And we'll get five of these. So those are adults. And then the rest, and then we'll buy, say, 10 of each uh, young sheep. And then we'll wait for reproduction to do the rest of the job for us. I guess if I was running a real farm, I probably wouldn't have, I probably wouldn't have a mixture of breeds like that, right? Okay. So now I think all we need to do is give him some food. Uh, and as far as I know, hay or grass will do, right? I think they're just as happy with either. Oh, it says grass. Oh, grass and hay. All right. Yeah, so I think we can give him either one. Grass is easier, obviously. Um, let's see what we can buy. We could buy grass bales from the shop. No, we can buy hay bales from the shop. Those are 1500 bucks each for the square ones. Oh, can I just lease it? <laughs> yeah, it doesn't let you lease bales. Um, and you get 8,000 liters from the square ones and four and a half from the round ones. So it seems like the square bales is a better deal. Or we can buy grass with the multi-fruit buying station. Okay, so multi-fruit buying station seems like the way to go here, right? So let's get one of those. And I think we'll put it over here in the main yard, maybe next to our other silos. Does my trailer hold grass? Uh, that's a good question. Probably not, but let's check. Is this the one I have? No. It's this Flegel. Yeah, it looks like it holds everything. Except eggs. <laughs> Should roll up to the shop with a trailer full of eggs. See what kind of looks I get. <laughs> Alright. Yeah, maybe I can put the multi-fruit silo right there. We'll take a look. Let's see what's let's see what makes sense. Okay, silo. Where is it? It's in container, of course it is. Multi-fruit buying station. Oh, it's quite reasonably priced. Okay, yeah, I think right here seems like a good spot for it. All right. Let's buy some grass. All right, see you, Mr. Electric. Thanks for stopping by. Hopefully we'll see you here again.
Start filling. I don't know if grass... I'm assuming that grass is less expensive than hay. Don't know that for sure, but... And you say you can buy TMR with that as well? Oh. $1,350. That's cheap. I think I might not even bother mowing. That is really cheap. Maybe too cheap. Okay. Let's back it up to the sheep. And tip it in. Uh-oh. Got a bit of a problem there. Okay, so it holds 11,500 11, grass. We know that now. And we can put the rest of this grass in our silo. I think the silo holds grass. I'm pretty sure it holds anything that's not a liquid. Yep. That's very convenient. And let's just double check and see if... Well, I was going to say, let's see if we can buy TMR with it. Um, but when I buy the big cow barn, it has it can make TMR in the barn, so I wouldn't even really need to buy... You know, I can buy grass and straw and silage. Oh, yeah, you can buy mixed ration. Okay. Yeah, so that'll make starting with cows pretty easy as well. Okay, well, let's get this down to the other field. Oh, we'll need mineral feed too, right. Yeah, I forgot about that. Okay, so I think we're done for the day. Um, although, let's check our other production buildings uh, for what we're going to do with the wool. Okay, yeah, so the spinnery is what will turn... And there's, it looks like there's a couple different styles of spinnery. There's this kind. That is actually a really nice looking building. There's that spinnery. And there's this spinnery. Those are both nice looking buildings. Okay, so those will turn, those will turn wool or cotton into cloth. And then there should also be a tailor shop. Ah, yeah, see, there's that's the silage fermenting silo I was talking about. Oh, there's also a... Yeah, there's also a TMR silo, but anyway. I got production for fertilizer, seed, lime. Um... There's the tailor shop. Okay, so I've been using the no handcuffs version of these buildings just so you get more production out of a single building. But uh, yeah, it looks like tailor shop, the spinnery is going to be 60 grand, the tailor shop's going to be 100. Uh, so we'll have to get those placed as well. Um, but, uh, I've only got about a half an hour left, so I, th I think I'd, 
I think I'd rather get that oat harvest going. And uh, we'll do we'll do those buildings later on. Now the in terms of where we place things, um, the tailor shop I'm going to put over here along the main road, right? Because that would be I think a destination for people coming into town. So it should be close to the main highway. So we've already got we've got our bakery there. We'll put the, the tailor shop somewhere along this first part of the road. Um, whereas the spinnery, I think um, we can put close to the farm someplace. You know, like we got the grain mill over here. So maybe, you know, maybe the spinnery we put up here in field 46, close to the main road, but, you know, farther away from the main, the main drag, if you will. That's kind of what I'm thinking. All right. But I'll f we'll figure that out in the next stream. Okay, so we're going to want to wake up early tomorrow to get started on our harvest. I'm slumming with my McDonald's coffee today. I was out and about. Yeah, the property income is not bad. We're actually getting good... We're getting good cash from the windmill. Um... But speaking of that, let's, I don't need to hold on to a lot of cash. So I'm just going to, I'm going to repay as much of the loan as I can. Because that'll reduce our interest payments. And when we do need money to buy something, we can always borrow it back. Watch out, Turbo. And there's our sheep. You can see our single black sheep there looking lovely. And we're getting a little wool. Ah, yes. Thank you, Alex. Used machinery, as always. Let's take a look. Thanks for reminding me. Mm, yeah. Nothing I'm terribly interested in. There's still... That's the second time that Fent Favorite has come up for sale. After I spent a hundred grand on my T6. Doris has really got it out for me. <laughs> it's because she likes me. She just doesn't know how to express it, you know. <laughs> Doris, am I a joke to you? <laughs> She's definitely mocking me. She's like, hey, how you like that T6? Oh, you know what? This Fent is still on sale. Doesn't seem like anybody wants it. I might lower the price again. <laughs> All right. We could do course play. But I think... I think at least the first time. Look at... Look at I mean, this is still not a huge field, but let's just appreciate how fairly roomy this field is. And see the oats disappear off into the distance. I love it. So we'll go around one or two times, and then we can set a worker on it. And all of these oats are going straight into the grain mill. We're going to turn it all into flour. Kind of curious to see how much I get off this field. Um, according to calculations, it should be somewhere around 300, 350,000 liters. And uh, I had also calculated that that ought to be enough to keep the bakery running for about eight months making bread so that'll be a nice steady income stream for us well maybe not steady uh, if we do it right we're going to wait until uh, I think January is the best time to sell bread so to really optimize it you want to we'll just hold on to the bread all year long until I mean it's not terribly realistic though is it 
unless we're you know we're not making wonder bread we're making we're making fresh bread at a bakery for tourists to have a nice sandwich so I think we'll just sell the bread year round oh okay ghost child that is interesting so using herbicide takes away, what, 3% of your bonus yield? Which is 1.5% of your actual yield? Hmm. Thanks for testing that out. That That's really interesting. I guess we'll have to live with it, you know? I mean... I mean, I guess we could try to use the weeder, but I know the weeder doesn't... The weeder doesn't always get everything. <laughs> yeah, Doris is going to be buying a lot of bread. In the next stream, she'll be... We'll have to start calling her Big Doris. She's going to be gaining weight. Me too. Even Turbo will be eating bread. Hey, he's back. That was quick. The hoe works better than the weeder. I, I thought the hoe was only for... potatoes or something like that. Is that not correct? <laughs> Be nice. We just plow every time, right? That's the other option. I just don't want to have to deal with the stones every time that we harvest. That'll be kind of a pain. I wish we could double crop these fields. Like, um, you know, like where you plant your winter wheat and then you harvest it you know, like late spring, early summer, and then you still have time to get another crop in the ground and harvest that one before you have to plant the weed again. I know you can do that in some parts of the world. Uh, we're harvesting oats. Yeah, this is this is my largest field. Yeah, we're not even we're only about halfway around and we're just about full already. Uh is it just me or are my front wheels my front my front track was locked up. That was weird. Wheat and then poplar. Hmm. I've never done poplar in this game. But that might that might be something that's doable. All right, so we're almost full, so I'm just going to go straight so that I can get the chopped straw laid down. Oh, we hit the edge of the map. <laughs> well, it doesn't sound like a very good option, does it? <laughs> All right, let's 
Let's go unload. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that was a good one. Yeah. Why am I shaking like that? Yeah, it's it seems like the terrain is a little buggy over there. That's probably why my my track was locking up on me too. Do I know who Troopin is? Um I know of Troopin. Um I know I've seen some videos of he's a YouTuber, right? Yeah, I'm, I'm pretty sure I've seen some videos of his. Hey, Lucas. Thanks for the follow. Yeah, I, I, I know I've seen some of Troopin's videos, but I, to be honest, I, I can't remember what the videos were about. Was it, does he do in Factorio as well? Yeah, I, I know I've seen some of his stuff. Yeah, so... Yeah, I... I can definitely see a few hundred thousand liters coming off of this field uh, since we've gotten about halfway around and we've already had to unload. That's a good sign. Actually, I, I saw on Reddit where somebody was playing on this map. I think, I, I don't know if it was on 22 or 19. Because he already had a ton of hours. And, and he basically took all the land on the map and turned it into like three huge fields. He said it took him three and a half hours to harvest, to do a canola harvest on one of his fields. Like three and a half, <laughs> three and a half hours in real life. That's a big field. I can see this one taking maybe an hour. So I'll, I'll probably have to finish it offline. So I don't have that much time. Still got to go to Costco. <laughs> Not my favorite shopping trip, but... Good place to go buy those bulk items. Smell the bread already. Yeah, 
Yeah, right. Coffee house would be nice. But for the purposes of this playthrough, we'll just we'll just imagine that that they make good coffee there at the bakery. I mean, you gotta have good coffee at a bakery. I don't really know of any good bakeries around where I live. I gotta find one. Well, I do know of one, actually. There's a really good... There's a really good German bakery on the other side of town. pastries are fantastic. I don't think I've ever had a, a loaf of bread from there yet, but <laughs> you have a bakery at home? That's good. That's the best kind. Oh, yeah, we got the fast food selling point. Yeah, I guess Germans aren't known for their bread. Not like the French are. <laughs> but I tell you the the pastries that I've that we've gotten from that German bakery and the cookies are fantastic. There's a, uh, where my wife works, they have a, uh, they have a service provider that, that goes and visits the office pretty regularly, and um, every time he goes, he brings a box of pastries from this place for my wife to bring home. And I keep asking her, when's that guy, <laughs> when's that guy coming to visit again? Because <laughs> they're really good. Anyway, I do love fresh baked bread. With lots of butter on it. Nothing better than that. Jay, are you in Germany? Oh, okay. I didn't know that. Well, I'm not the one that said that you don't have good bread, okay? That was bloodline. I just said that Germans are not known for having good bread, which I think is true. At least where I live, they're not known for that. They're known for having good beer and sausages and stuff, you know? <laughs> But I really like German food, so um, I have no doubt that you guys know how to make good bread, too. There's, um, you know, I think I told you guys I live in El Paso. There's a big, there's a big military base. It's an army base, uh, but there's also an airfield here, and... Um, for a long time, there was some sort of there was some sort of cooperative operation going on, like training operations going on with the German Air Force. Uh, I think that's ended now. Um, but there were there were always a lot of a lot of German folks here in El Paso, and and there used to be a few good German restaurants too. Um, but they've they've since closed. Um, but there are a couple bakeries. 
and there's like a there's like a, a German pub I guess you could call it you know where they they serve beer and you know and sausage and schnitzel and stuff like that it's not like you know it's not like a regular restaurant more like bar food but it's good Uh, hey, Raid Shot. Um, I, I have been using Course Play a little bit. I've got it installed here. Um, I'm not using it at the moment, obviously, but um, I don't have any idea about what their plans are for multiplayer. I, I couldn't comment on that. Not sure about it. I've actually not played, done much multiplayer in Farm Sim. Although my my brother has picked up the game and um, I've been trying to work out a way for him to join me on stream sometime. Um, so we were able to get a multiplayer session connected, but we were having trouble with all the mods and stuff that I'm using on this one. So I'm going to have to make the time to work with him some more on that and then if we could get it working uh, we could probably have some of you guys on the stream uh, in the game as well if you wanted to join um, but you know I, I don't know when that may or may not be ready I'm kind of like <laughs> when it comes to multiplayer it's it's kind of like with Factorio like you know I've done some multiplayer stuff and uh, you know I did that multiplayer series with JD recently which was fun but it's um, it's not really my preferred way to play these games Like when other people are doing some of the work, I just, I don't feel as much satisfaction about the result, you know, it's, I, I don't, it probably sounds kind of antisocial, but uh, Mr. Electric Course Play is a mod that, um, well, first of all, since, since you don't know the game very well, um, I guess the first thing you should know is that you can hire workers to work on your fields, right? Uh, for example, I'm going to do that right now. I'll line up my implement. I'll press the button to hire a worker. And now the AI is going to drive my machine while I go off and do something else. Okay, and you pay wages. Like, if you look at my money, you'll see my money tick down every couple of seconds because I'm using the AI worker. Now, uh, the base game AI worker is not very smart. And um, if you have a rectangular field and all he has to do is go up and down the field a bunch of times, they do a pretty good job with that. But um, when you have fields that have complicated shapes like this one, or for more complicated types of jobs uh, there's a mod called course play that will it'll analyze your field and it'll generate a path for the worker to follow so it's like it's like a more advanced it's like a more advanced AI for hired workers essentially And a lot of people like to use course play because you can you can automate a lot of your farm work with it that you wouldn't be able to otherwise. And you can get a pretty big operation rolling. Um, 
but course play is still it's still in the beta phase for farm sim 22 they've had to rewrite it with the new version of the game and they're still working on it but it is available and it works for some of the more rudimentary rudimentary functions and uh yeah and last i heard it's not available yet for multiplayer I do need to put together a mod list, don't I? I'll have to work on that. Uh, Patat Airline, welcome. I'm not sure if I said that the way that you want it pronounced. Thanks for stopping by the stream. First load of oats. And we'll swing around again so that we can finish unloading. I hope it's got enough space to get back to the end of the field so that we don't have to drive through the crop to unload it. I probably should have just gone straight <laughs> to avoid this roundabout path here. I think he should make it to the end of the field. Oh, you got a lot of snow too, huh? Yeah, and I meant I meant to start earlier today, but there was um, I had promised my wife yesterday that we were gonna out the refrigerator this morning and I forgot all about it I went to run another errand and so when I got back I was intending to start the stream but um, I had to do that other thing first so. so when I mean clean the refrigerator I mean empty everything out of it and wipe down the entire inside and all the shelves and everything it's, gotta be done every once in a while. TTV Curly Fry, welcome to the stream. Ah, okay. Well, bienvenue. Hope you enjoyed the stream. I'm loving Farm Sim 22. In fact, this is about all I've been playing lately. <clears throat> I've all but abandoned Factorio for the time being. Okay, we can stop there. Looks like I missed a few rocks <laughs> when I prepared this field. Yeah, FS22 is great. I, I'm enjoying it quite a lot. Okay. Um, we'll let the worker keep going for now. Let's check on our production. Okay, so the barley is finished. So we can turn off that and we'll turn on the oat flour. So we can start processing the oats. And we can see over there at the bakery that we've got um, we've got flour rolling in and making bread. So we got almost 8,000 liters of bread already finished. Um, and we can see the strawberries accumulating there. I had already delivered some eggs 
kind of by accident. I thought I would be able to sell my eggs at the bakery, but it turns out they just went into storage, so that's why we see eggs there. Uh, thanks, TTV. Appreciate that. Why did I abandon Factorio for a few days? Oh. <laughs> yeah, unfortunately, I can't, I can't yet automate the building of my base in Factorio. Like, if I could automate somebody to, to make the base and make YouTube videos for me, that would be awesome. <laughs> that would be peak automation. Let's see how much we've harvested so far. Okay, we've done 8.2 hectares already. And we're not quite half done, I would say. So in terms of this field size, looks like it's probably around 16, 17 hectares. It's fairly respectable. Um, I'm going to be streaming for about another five minutes or so. I'm going to have to wrap up here fairly soon. Yep, the plan today was just just to go for about two hours. So. Not that long by streaming standards. Then I'll use the rest of my day off to do some other, hopefully, somewhat productive things. Maybe watch a movie later. Uh, we watched a series on, I think it was on HBO, called Station Eleven, and I really liked it. If you guys, if you guys are looking for a new series, I would check it out. I, I think it's only going to be a single season. It was, um, it was based on a book. But it was really, really good. I enjoyed it a lot. It was like one of it was one of those ones where you know you're just looking forward to every episode. Okay, yeah, you guys want to take a shot at it? I'm at the part on Factorissimo where you have to build everything inside of one building. <laughs> It's kind of at the hard part. That's, uh, I'd say that's the other reason why I haven't really, <laughs> why I haven't really been super motivated to get back into it. So I'm at the really difficult section now. drop this off at the grain mill. I keep wanting to call it a granary, but I think I think a granary is just a silo, right? Not necessarily a mill. The Last Kingdom. I'll have to check that out. I think I may have seen one episode or something. Um, but I haven't watched it much. I've been kind of hungry for new content. It keeps popping up in my recommendations. I just haven't watched it yet. All right, let's see if we learned our lesson this time. I'm just going to cut across the top. I'm going to clear all these trees out, by the way. 
it's not necessarily going to give us a lot more field, but it'll make working the field a lot easier. Well, a little bit easier. <laughs> not to exaggerate. Yeah, that sounds pretty interesting. I, I'll definitely check that one out. All right, folks. So um, I think I'm going to finish up this harvest offline. Um, maybe I'll go ahead and put down the tailor shop and the spinnery in those locations that we talked about, right? The tailor shop over here somewhere close to the bakery and the spinnery um, somewhere along the road here, probably in in field 46 or plot 46, um, or maybe even a little bit off the road, kind of like we did with the grain mill. Um, I'll get those buildings set up so that uh, so that our wool gets deposited there Let's check in our sheet, by the way. Ah, we're already at 100% productivity. How pleasing. Actually, let's, let's warp over to the farm and take a look at how they're doing. Oh, okay, open that door. <laughs> it's not the one I was expecting. Soybeans are looking good, but we got a few more months before the soybeans are going to be ready to harvest. I think October is what the calendar said. All right, so the chickens are making eggs. The sheep are looking healthy. Making a little bit of wool. Looks like we just have the one pallet. Now with... I remember with Seasons mod, the production of wool was seasonal. Um, as in, what was it? I guess in the spring is when most of your wool production gets done. When the winter's over and they don't need their heavy coats anymore. So I, I don't know if the game, I don't know if FS22 is going to be like that or if it's just a steady wool production all year round. I'll have to do a little bit of research. Um, but yeah, I think, I think, Doing the splotchy grass inside here makes it look fairly realistic, as far as I can tell. Oh, it's not seasonal anymore? Okay. All right, so we'll just have a steady supply of wool. I guess that's good. It'll make things easier, if less realistic. Yeah. So, looking good. And then... Um, We've got 31 out of the 65 that this can hold right now, and over time they'll they'll start to reproduce and give us some babies. And fill that thing up. <clears throat> and then we can start... Maybe in the next stream we'll work on setting up the... Uh, setting up the cow pen. <clears throat> All right, see you later. Have a great day. And thanks again, everybody. Appreciate you stopping by the stream. Um, I'll stream again Wednesday evening. Uh, the loan right now is close to two and a half million. I'll check here in a second. Thanks to Silas. Have a good one. Yeah, we haven't been shy about borrowing or spending money. Alright, he doesn't want to stop to let me do that. That's fine. <laughs> Let's take a look here real quick. Yeah, 2.265 million. So, we owe a lot to the bank. And uh, we're going to pay it all off before we finish on the map. So, all right, everybody, have a good one. Take care.